Rand Paul is suing President Obama. Senator Paul joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Glad to be with you, Greta. Okay, you filed suit already. You've taken him to court. What's the purpose of the suit? You know, the question is, is whether a single warrant can apply to millions of Americans. Uh, we think that this is a general warrant, and the Fourth Amendment says a warrant has to have your name on it. It has to be individualized to the person and the place. And we fought the revolution largely over this point, that we were unhappy about British soldiers writing their own warrants and for them being nonspecific where they could go in anyone's house. Now it's your computer or your phone records, but it's the same principle. The warrant needs to have suspicion. The government needs to say to a judge, we think that you've committed a crime and we have probable cause that you committed a crime, present some evidence to the judge, and then the judge gives a warrant. But right now we have a warrant, and this was revealed by Snowden, we have a warrant given to Verizon for all of their phone calls. And we really think that's uh, not specific, and we think it goes against the Fourth Amendment. We want to get all the way to the Supreme Court and in an open court decide whether this is constitutional. Senator, I have the Fourth Amendment right in front of me, and I will tell you that uh, it's, you know, any judge can be hard-pressed to uh, in any way invalidate the NSA uh, search and seizure. However, the wording of the Fourth Amendment is quite plain, that you need a warrant. That's what it says. And has to particularly describe the place to be searched and the person or things to be seized. So the plain wording of the Fourth Amendment is very plain. And if the Obama administration or anybody else doesn't like it, we either should change the Constitution or get a particularized warrant to comply with it. But I don't think any judge is ever going to have the courage to, uh, to go your way. <laughs> you know, we'll see. And the thing is, is you make a good point. I'm not against the NSA getting warrants. I'm not against the police getting warrants. If there's a murderer or a rapist running around in Washington, D.C., by all means, let's get a warrant and go in a house, capture them, or get their records. Same way with terrorists. But let's go ahead and name them, and then let's, if we want to look at the phone calls they've been making, let's name those people. And I don't, I'm not so concerned about how far out and how many hops you go out as I am that it be individualized and that there be suspicion. My fear is, is that we've gone so much into collecting everyone's records and spending billions of dollars and millions of hours doing this that we're letting down on, on the traditional police work that we need. The Sonarif boys, who were the Boston bombers, had traveled to Chechnya, were on websites, they were labeling themselves or their music, terrorist music, and they were communicating with people who were preaching uh, forms of radical jihad and violence. And so they were connected, but we weren't connecting the dots, even though the Russians warned us about us about them. So I think we, we get distracted too much. Well, I, I actually think you can have investigations and you can follow the Constitution simultaneously. I don't think you have to go outside the Constitution. But let me ask you, you had lunch after filing uh, with Attorney General Eric Holder. <laughs> um, that must have been cozy. <laughs> well, you know, as an individual, I like Eric Holder. I think he's sincere. I don't agree with him on a lot of issues. But one issue I do agree with him on is that I think uh, people should be allowed to have redemption. As a Christian, I think people deserve a second chance. If you've not committed a violent felony, if you were caught with drugs or possession or sale, you served your time, I think we should try to get you back in society. And I think you should get your right to vote back. In fact, I will testify in Frankfurt for giving non violent felons their right to vote back again after they've served their time because I, I think it's a good way to reincorporate people back into society. Did he happen to say anything about the fact that you were suing the president or suing him <laughs> at the lunch? Did he say, did he say anything at all? Like, uh, hey, thanks for the lawsuit. Uh, yeah, I met him in the big paneled conference room beneath the portrait of Bobby Kennedy and he said, I understand you're suing me. And uh, I said, well, it's nothing personal. And uh, but uh, we did laugh a little bit about that. And it will be his Justice Department. It's not a laughing matter. We laughed about being there for lunch together. It's a serious matter. I'm sure he will treat it seriously from his point of view. And I will, too. And the big thing I hope is right now, these questions are being decided in secret in front of something we call the FISA court or a national security court. But they're not getting the light of day, and there's not a lawyer on both sides. One of the big things, and I know Judge Napolitano writes about this and talks about this, is that you can't find truth unless you have an adversarial process. You need a lawyer on both sides. The defendant needs a lawyer. FISA, there is no lawyer for the, the guy who thinks the Bill of Rights preserves our privacy. So this is a big deal. It needs to get into the Supreme Court. I hope it's my case. But if it's not my case, my case I hope a case gets into the light of day. 
Senator, thank you. I urge the viewers, just for their uh, education, always to uh, take a look at the Constitution. I just read the Fourth Amendment for about the millionth time and uh, never can get enough of it. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Greta.